What's going on, guys? This <laughs> wait, is it point? What's going on, guys? This is episode six of Wrecked Bike Refresh, where we buy a motorcycle and flip it, and then give it away as fast as possible. This is one episode over because Brian. I don't had think it's working. Brian wanted to do a lot on this bike, so we're only one episode over the four to five. Uh, they're gonna do work. I'm Chase. I'm gonna go. Just give me the camera. Y'all do the work. The bike will be finished today. It'll be totally done. Not today. By this the end of this episode. That guy. We ended our last episode. Uh, we had decided not to put the bodywork on because we were just gonna have to take it off again to put it back on again. Um, and we thought that would be just a, a kind of a waste of time, but we also found out from our uh, rap guy recently that he needs the bodywork on so he can make sure that all the lines are lined up. So we're gonna put the bodywork on and then we're gonna pack the bike up and then it's gonna get shipped off to the uh, wrap guy so we could have it wrapped and then it's going to come back from the wrap guy and we have a couple small little details to finish off a couple small pieces of uh, missing hardware and then a couple small pieces of plastic that uh, we had to order that uh, are at the shop waiting to be picked up by us so we can actually install them and finish this thing off so we're really close we're pretty much down to the finishing touches and uh, this thing will be ready for a street ride soon enough. This is our new fairing to replace the, uh, the one that Luke has on the bench over there that got all scratched up. Nice and pretty. Pretty nice. We're going to swap some plastics here and put some blinkers on. So um, the blinkers that it came from the, that are on this bike from the factory are also running lights. So there's three wires in the system. The blinkers that we're putting on are just blinkers. They're not running lights. So we need to do away with the running light wire in the system. So there's no real way to tell unless we test the wires to see which one has constant power to it when the key is on, which is what we just did. Unfortunately, while we were doing that, our jumper leads touched each other and grounded out to each other and blew the fuse for the running light system of the bike, which also runs a tail light. So that's the fuse that we blew, that we just replaced. So now that it works, so now we know which is the running light wire. And now we can clip off the one that we don't need and hook our blinkers up and move forward. So we got the blinkers all smoldered together. Uh, I did one, it looks okay. Brian did the other, it looks like a professional did it. Um, so now we're gonna swap all these plastic, these three plastic pieces over to our brand new fairing. And then we're going to uh, route our blinkers through it and then slap the fairings onto the bike.
get a little ahead of ourselves because uh, this nut doesn't fit over this. So we're gonna have to cut it, install the blinker, and then re-solder. Good thing that, you know, you're, you're prepped for it already. <laughs> it was a good test run. It was a good, a good draw run. There you, you know, go. Everybody did very well. So well. let's just do it for real this time. <clears throat> I did mine all nice and too. It's sitting over there. I gotta cut all that shit back apart too. Yeah, I did mine to the, to the best of my ability. And I have to do it again. back on. All right. I'm going to say that in a more concise way to the video. Okay. Now we can put those back on. Brian. All right. Luke. So we have messed around with the blinkers like three different ways and we finally figured out how they go on because there was three wires and two wires and then da da blah, blah, blah. And then now, so we're going to, we're done with it and we're going to put the fairings on uh, left and right and then something else. So we have our bodywork on, we have our blinkers installed, we've tested to make sure that everything is working properly. This is as much bodywork as we need to put on before bringing it to, uh, to have it wrapped. And now to the wrap. <clears throat> and now we got the bike wrap, so here it is. So here we are, the CBR is back in the shop after getting its uh, beautiful wrap job in uh, the voted on colors by our Patreon folks. Um, our beautiful wrap job done by John over at Infinite Wraps here in Georgia. Now we're going to uh, take some stuff off so we can do all of our finish assembly and this thing will be done uh, in this episode by the end of the day today. This thing will be ready to roll. I don't know where we want to start. Uh, I know we have to take these side fairings off to replace these panels that we unfortunately missed on our last parts order that are damaged. Both sides of these are damaged. Um, our inner panel here was uh, misshapen because it was installed incorrectly for, I guess, a long period of time because it's not snapping back to the shape that it's supposed to be in. So for all of our fairings to fit correctly, we just went ahead and ordered that piece of plastic that goes inside of there. Um, to get our front fender on without scraping it up, we're going to have to drop the front wheel out and then that front fender goes on from the bottom coming up and then we won't scratch anything. 
They have a little bit of cleaning to do, some uh, bright work to do, just to uh, maybe touch up a couple of real fine scratches, like around the ignition switch here, which is pretty common. People's key dangle around and make little nicks and scratches in the top triple. We're just gonna touch those up a little bit. Silicone up a couple parts so they shine real nice. Clean up the wheels, set tire pressures, and then we'll get to do our ride. We ordered uh, an exhaust uh, shroud as well. Uh, heat shield. That was, yeah, that's scraped up. Banged up and beat up a little bit, so we're going to get ahead and replace that exhaust heat shield. That was super cheap. Was Wait, it? we got the metal thing in the bottom? We did. <gasps> yes. Yeah, we did. When I picked the bike up this morning, I saw that and I was like, man, we really should have done Replaced some. this. So, so you guys, <sighs> oh, baby. Yeah, look at what was right? Look at that. And we're only refinishing, so we could have left that, but look at all shiny. But I mean, as as inexpensive as this part actually was, it just didn't make any sense to not replace it. I think it was probably like $30. And then this inner fairing, the one for the gauge cluster that goes around the handlebars and stuff, this was $36. So like these yeah, well, little parts are just so inexpensive to, to not replace them doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. We got replacement foot peg mounts, not really rear sets, but the brackets that the foot pegs actually go on to. We got new ones of those and put those on. We also got some foot peg stuff too, because these are kind of beat up a little bit. How's the powder coat look on those? That one looks good. This is the one that was scraped up though, so I'm more interested to see if uh, the sandblasting took the scrapes out of this before they powder coated it. It should have. What are those? These are the rear passenger grab handles. Nice. Actually, oh shit would be the passenger, the uh, actual rider would be the oh shit handle. <laughs> That's when oh shit and then both people are off the bike and sliding down the road at the same time. See, we can go ahead and stick that on and then the rear will be finished with just those two handles left. And then we can go ahead and remove these side fairings, um, get the gauge cluster reinstalled into that fairing and install it onto here. And then, uh, mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, replace those pieces of uh, black plastic on the inner fender that are scraped up. Um, we can put those fairings back on. Then before we put the lower fairings on, we need to jack the bike up so we could pull the front wheel out so we can put the front fender on without damaging it. And then front wheel goes back on, heat shield goes on, side fairings for the bottom go on, foot pegs get rebuilt, and uh, we are complete. Yeah, so this is, if you guys could see how misshapen this whole thing is compared to this side. That wasn't allowing our bodywork to actually snap in place because that was so mis uh, misshapen. So. So uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we were putting together our whole foot uh, brake pedal assembly, we were missing the hardware that goes on the back that actually holds the brake pedal on. We got some new replacement hardware for it, the washer and the snap ring there to, uh, to actually get to it and put it on without too much trouble. I'm gonna head and remove the foot peg bracket so I can get to the back of it nice and easy. So, I don't know if you'll be able to actually see this. 
So here is our snap ring. It, it's gonna be hard to tell, but there is a side that is kind of rounded, and then there's a side that's kind of flat and sharp. So you always wanna make sure that the really flat, sharp side faces outside, so the sharp side locks on where you need it to lock on. You just get a much better bite when you have the nice, flat, sharp side in the groove facing outward. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So we're uh, jacking the front of the bike up. So uh, so we can put the front fender on without damaging the uh, the new wrap on the on the fender. Grease the axle and slide her in. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's too low, bro. I have standards. No, you don't. It's low hanging fruit. That's all the way I said. I refuse. All right, look, you're going to slide her on in. Just jam it in there. Push hard. A little more. Is it going? No, drive the thing in. Okay. Got a lot of things going on over here on the side. A lot of riffraff, you know what I'm saying, Brian? Trying to ignore it, because we got work to do. Yeah. These guys standing around just watching shit. It's not uh, tight, tight, but it's tight. Now the side fairings come off. The uh, gauge cluster center assembly goes in, and then these go back on again. And what are we taking those off for? To put this other piece of plastic in. It won't go in without these being off. And then we also have to uh, plinko. Um, we also have to change these inner pieces of plastic in here, so we got to take it off to do that anyway. Um, so we fixed this piece. As you can see, this one's perfect, this one's not, so we're not gonna use this one. We're gonna use this one.
Guess where this plugs in? Damn. Right here behind this fairing that we just put on. She done, fam. Yeah. So our uh, high beam switch works correctly now. Oh yeah, because that's one of the reasons that's, we got a new switch. Yeah, and uh, are our winkers winking? The winkers are winking. Winkers are winking. <laughs> Horn works. Brake light works. Adjust that one a little bit, but the brake light works. Fuel pump cycles. You ready for it? That's what happens when you put this big, uh, fully open exhaust system on it. Okie dokie. Last we have to do before we take this thing for its maiden voyage, double check the chain tension, double check the tire pressures, and bomb it down the street. Sounds like a good time, what do you think? Yeah, but unfortunately... This has been a long enough episode and Chase said that we have to make another one. Please send help. It's dark out, it's cold, everybody's tired, and Chase is making us make another video. This uh, thing came out pretty damn good. I like it. This is as good of shots as you guys are going to get until we do the cinematic ear reveal stuff, but that's what the bike looks like. Outro crew, say hi to Bo in the comments. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, I was the outro crew. Now I'm talking to the outro crew. It's weird. That's weird. Brian, stop working on it. We're done. <laughs>